Think about black asphalt surfaces radiating heat on a hot summer day, with the air rising from the asphalt like hot air from a hairdryer. If there was a grass or soil area instead of a black-colored asphalt, as it would have existed before the development, this effect would not occur, as soil cannot absorb the solar heat like black-surfaced asphalt does. This is an example of the heat island effect. Disturbing the environment with dark-colored, non-reflective surfaces cause the heat island effect. These surfaces absorb heat during hot weather and release it into the atmosphere. Studies show that urban heat islands are responsible for 24.2% of global warming. And because of this effect, urban areas can have air temperatures that are 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit to 22 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the surrounding suburban areas. Higher temperatures will also lead to smog, or ground-level ozone, which creates consequences for human health. Heat islands are also responsible for increased cooling loads in buildings, which results in higher electricity usage, in addition to causing harm to plants and animals that are sensitive to temperature changes. Please think about wearing a black t-shirt on a hot summer day when walking under the sun at noon and compare the difference of heat that will be absorbed by the black t-shirt with a white-colored t-shirt. The black t-shirt will emit all the heat from the sun, while the white t-shirt will reflect back the heat. This can be explained with the differences of their solar reflectance, SR, and solar reflectance index, SRI, values. A solar reflectance, SR value will show the solar energy that is reflected by a surface on a scale of 0 to 1. A black surface will have an SR of 0, while a white surface will have an SR of 1. A material's SRI value will indicate a material's ability to stay cool by reflecting solar radiation and emitting thermal radiation. Thus, both the solar reflectance and emissivity of a material will be combined to rank the material. Emissivity, which is infrared or thermal emittance, is a measure which shows how much heat or infrared radiation a material can shed back into the atmosphere. The SRI value of a material is measured from a scale of 0 to 100, in which light-colored materials are closer to scoring 100 SRI while darker-colored materials are closer to scoring zero SRI. Lighter-colored materials are sometimes called high-albedo materials, which is another type of reflectivity measurement. Thus, the higher the SRI or SR, the lower the heat island effect. In the lead credit calculations, in order to classify building materials according to their solar emissions and reflectance, the SRI values will be used for the roofing materials, and the SR values will be used for the non-roof materials, such as hardscape. And in addition to the initial SR and SRI values, three-year aged SR and SRI values will also be needed, since the material's performance will drop as they age. This credit awards points for minimizing a project's heat island effect using vegetated roofs, light-colored non-roof measures, high reflectance roofs, or covered parking. Let's take a closer look at this credit. Credit intent. To minimize effects on microclimates, wildlife habitats, and humans by reducing heat islands. Credit requirements. Projects should choose one of the following options. Let's start with option one, non-roof and roof. Projects pursuing this option should meet the following formula. Area of non-roof measures divided by 0 0.5 plus area of high reflectance roof divided by 0 0.75 plus area of vegetated roof divided by 0 0.75 should be more than or equal to the total site paving area plus the total roof area. Project teams will input the areas of non-roof measures, high reflectance roof, and vegetated roof on the left side of the equation if they meet the requirements set forth for each of them, which will be mentioned shortly. If a non-roof measure or a high reflectance roof or a vegetated roof cannot meet the credit requirements, it cannot be included in the left side of the equation and will only be counted on the right side of the equation. The strategies are grouped under non-roof measures, 
by reflectance roof and vegetated roof. Projects should use any combination of the following strategies to satisfy the equation. Let's start with the requirements for the non-roof measure on site. For the non-roof measures on site, projects can use existing plants or install new plants that will provide shade over paving areas on the site within 10 years of planting, install vegetated planters. However, plants must be in place at the time of the occupancy permit and artificial turf cannot be included. Provide shade with structures covered by energy generation systems such as solar thermal collectors, photovoltaics, and wind turbines. Provide shade with architectural devices or structures that have a three-year aged solar reflectance value of at least 0.28. If this information is not available, projects can use materials with an initial SR of at least 0.33. Provide shade with vegetated structures. Use paving materials with a three-year aged solar reflectance value of at least 0.28. If this information is not available, the projects can use materials with an initial SR of at least 0.33. Use an open grid pavement system that is at least 50% unbound. One thing to note for the non-roof measures is that if the building contains parking on the top level, this area will be considered a non-roof surface. If the top level does not contain any parking, the project teams will consider it a roof measure. Now, let's continue with the credit requirements for high reflectance roofs. Projects should use roofing materials that have an SRI and three-year aged SRI equal to or greater than the values in the displayed table. If a three-year aged SRI value is not available, projects can use materials that meet the initial SRI value. Projects should also consider maintaining the SRI value of the roof by regular cleaning and maintenance. In the credit calculations, roof areas covered by mechanical equipment Solar energy panels, skylights, or similar items will be excluded. If the project has multiple roofs with different angles and cannot meet the credit's requirements with the previous equation, project teams should conduct a weighted non-roof or roof calculation and determine if the weighted calculation can satisfy the credit. This is useful for projects that contain roof or non-roof measures both below and above the required SRI values. Project teams for international projects that cannot obtain the SRI information from their manufacturers can identify a similar material from the Cool Roof Rating Council standard and can satisfy the documentation requirements. And for vegetated roofs, projects can install both intensive and extensive vegetated roofs. However, artificial turf grass will not meet the credit's requirements. To summarize, under this option, Projects will work on satisfying the displayed formula. The area of qualifying non-roof measures, high reflectance roof, and the vegetated roof will be on the left side of the equation. And the total site paving area and total roof area will be on the right side of the equation. To document this option, project teams should submit non-roof and roof area calculations a site plan showing the areas of each roof and non-roof measure, and the manufacturer's documentation stating the SR, SRI, and paving permeability. Now, let's take a look at option two, parking under cover. Under this option, projects should place at least 75% of parking spaces under cover. This would include locating the parking spaces under a deck, under a roof, or under a building. Motorcycle spaces are included in the calculations. However, bicycle parking spaces are exempt, which is also important to know for the exam purposes. Remember that when doing the credit calculations for the location and transportation credits, motorcycle spaces are not included in the parking capacity calculations, as we have discussed under the Documentation Location and Transportation Credits module. Going back to option two, any roof that is used to shade or cover parking must either have a three-year aged SRI of at least 32. If this information is not available, projects can use materials with an initial SRI of at least 39. Be a vegetated roof or 
be covered by energy generation systems such as solar thermal collectors, photovoltaics, and wind turbines. Any of these requirements will also apply to the building's top-level parking spaces if applicable. To document this option, project teams should submit the manufacturer's documentation stating the SR, SRI, and paving permeability, and they should submit the parking space calculations. Now let's take a look at the exemplary performance requirement for this credit. To qualify for exemplary performance under this credit, projects need to achieve both Option 1 and Option 2 and locate 100% of parking under cover. Lastly, let's take a look at the key things to remember for this credit. 1. Know the credit's formula mentioned under Option 1. 2. SR, SRI, and also three-year aged SR and SRI values are both used in the credit. 3. For non-roof measures, SR values are used. For roofs, SRI values are used. 4. The use of lighter colored surfaces reduces the heat island effect. 5. If the project contains multiple roofs with different angles, and cannot meet the credit's requirements with the credit's formula, project teams should conduct a weighted non-roof or roof calculation and determine if the weighted calculation can satisfy the credit. And 6. Teams for international projects that cannot obtain the SRI information from their manufacturers can identify a similar material from the Cool Roof Rating Council standard and can satisfy the documentation requirements.